was one of the greatest speeches ever. It has maybe the most memorable paragraph that you've ever heard about television. The speech was given way back in the early 60s by Neil Minow. And here is the paragraph. When television is bad, nothing is worse. I invite each of you to sit down in front of your television set when your station goes on the air and stay there for a day without a book, without a magazine, without a newspaper, without a profit and loss sheet or a rating book to distract you. Keep your eyes glued to that set until the station signs off. Younger adults, TV used to sign off. <laughs> I can assure you that what you will observe is a vast wasteland. Well, that was quite a speech. And today, the vast wasteland is not the television. It is this. And yesterday, Prince Harry actually stated out loud that Great Britain and the world should basically come to grips with the dangers of this device. He said we ought to make it against the law to play Fortnite. Um, now I'm in trouble. I've never played Fortnite. I have no idea what it is. Um, but he says social media is leading to mental problems and a rise in suicide. Prince Harry, that's not, that's not a, a casual, you know, accusation. That's a serious accusation. And one other news item, Coach Cliff Kingsbury, who is the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, has instituted social media breaks in his team meetings. He says, and, and, and this is really fascinating, he said you can watch their bodies and they begin to twitch. He said I make them leave the phones over on a table during the meeting, but you can see them beginning to twitch. And so he gives them a social media break so they can go to Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is they go to. And so this has really taken over our lives. And I'm going to tell you that I don't Instagram, I don't Facebook, but I am addicted. Hi, my name is Randy and I am an addict. I am addicted to Twitter. And if you are addicted to any of those, then you understand what I'm talking about. And that is the term that Cal Newport uses in the book, Digital Minimalism. It is a remarkable book. Choosing a focused life in a noisy world is the subtitle. So if you will take your handout, Digital Minimalism, and turn all the way to page 7. On the left, Digital Minimalism. A philosophy of technology use in which you focus your online time on a small number of carefully selected and optimized activities that strongly support things you value and then happily miss out on everything else. <laughs> when Neil Minow gave that speech about the vast wasteland, television was barely a decade old. I mean, it had been invented much earlier, but there were no television stations rolling across the country until the very late 40s and early 50s. 1952, Dwight Eisenhower had the first ever presidential television commercial. So, so it was barely a decade old when Minow gave that speech. And, and what he was really saying, as you read the whole speech, is we didn't know how television was going to consume our time. We didn't know what it was going to do to us. And that's what Cal Newport says in this book. We did not know what this device was going to do to us. This device is only 12 years old. Now we had cell phones before that, but in 2007, Steve Jobs walked on stage and said, 
dramatically today, Apple reinvents the phone. And whether you use an iPhone or some other smartphone, it began 12 years ago. And it has consumed us. People go on dates and they check their phones. You walk into a college classroom, which I do. I went to college. You know what we did in the college classroom before the teacher started? We talked to each other. I don't know if you remember doing that, but we talked to each other. I loved walking in to this room and when the tables are full before we start, I hear the buzz in the room. That's not happening among young adults. They are simply staring at their devices. And so on the right, now let's concede that all of this technology is wonderful, helping us in so many ways. What would we do without this? I mean, we wouldn't know who won the third Super Bowl and what the score with, was without asking Siri. So it's wonderful to have all of that information at your fingertips, except when it's not helping us, when it's hurting us. So the book is filled with good stories. Uh, he tells this story. He tells about a man who was elected president. His name was Abraham Lincoln. And it was a very tumultuous time, as you well know. And he had no respite from interruption. Literally, people would hang outside the room where he was in a meeting wanting jobs in the government. And so there was a place that was a little bit away from where he lived, and he would ride his horse to that place, spend nights there. Sometimes he would ride the horse without his protection. Once he was shot at on his ride, and he would go and he would ride to that spot and he would spend time alone. Nobody could interrupt him there. He would write on scraps of paper. He would put them in his hat. Uh, famously, he wrote the Gettysburg Address, it's probably a myth, on an envelope. But, but he, he lived with himself. He had to get away to live with himself. First word to write down, just find a spot underneath here, write down the word solitude. Abraham Lincoln practiced solitude. We're going to come back to that in a bit. There is a restaurant, I think it's on the East Coast, I don't remember for sure, in the book he mentions it, and, and they have one night a week where it is standing room only that everybody has to sit, but, but the tables are full, and the phones are not allowed in, and every table has a board game. And so people come and play board games and they interact with each other with board games and there is no phone and it is wildly popular. Um, he talks about a man who, who just felt like he was losing control with actual life so he started making stuff and he rediscovered using his hands and he made stuff and he felt like he rediscovered his life. Um, and he tells other stories about people who intentionally put the phone away and take walks. He starts the book with a reminder, and, and, and it's hard to imagine this. Have you seen a, a young child going outside the house today? They have knee pads and shoulder pads and helmets. And, 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 and if there was a chance in the world that that child was anywhere for 30 seconds where the parents did not know exactly where they were, we would call out the National Guard. But he tells the story of when he grew up, and I remember this, I would just disappear into the neighborhood. I would just go ride my bike anywhere. I, I had a friend and we would go out to the, to the woods and we would play in the woods. And somehow we survived that. Somehow we survived that. And so th these people who, who just go for walks and leave their phone at home, uh, they talk about the, the stress that that feels like because what if somebody needs to reach me? Well, you know what? It's okay that you're unreachable for a while, isn't it? <clears throat> Isn't it okay? So there's those stories. But then I want everybody to, to put a star beside this next item here. The rise in teenage 
anxiety, and suicide. And this is a quote from the book, the only factor that dramatically increased right around the same time. What happened was counselors in schools began reporting an unusual rise in teenage anxiety. That had not been there before. And the only factor was the number of young people owning their own smartphones. Fascinating. Fascinating. All right. Um, I don't normally do the table of contents. I, I always list it, but let me make a couple of observations. Here is the table of contents. It's a lopsided arms race. You understand that the people who work on Facebook and work on Twitter and work on Instagram, they are finding ways to keep your eyeballs connected because that's how they make more money. They don't want you to look away. They want you to stay in. The average Facebook user in America spends 50 minutes a day on Facebook and then other time on other stuff. All right, so the digital declutter, chapter three, look at this quote from the book. Put aside a 30 day period during which you will take a break from optional technology. Circle the word optional. And he, and he does say if you are working in a business and people connect you with your business, with your phone, you have to do it. But find a way to take a break from optional technologies in your life. During this 30 day break, explore and rediscover activities and behaviors that you find satisfying and meaningful. And he says in the book, and by the way, when you first do it, what you used to be meaningful and satisfying doesn't feel that way because you want your phone. It's really fascinating. At the end of the break, reintroduce optional technologies into your life, starting from a blank slate, kind of zero-based budgeting of your time with your device. For each technology you reintroduce, determine what value it serves in your life and how specifically you will use it so as to maximize this value. And then among the practices, we're going to repeat these in a minute, are these, don't click like. <laughs> and, and it turns out that when Facebook introduced the, the like button, that was the moment. If you put something on Facebook and your friends don't like it, you feel like a failure. It literally becomes a, a shot. It's an addiction. You gotta have like, so don't click like. Okay, what happened? Well, the Facebook, that's what Zuckerberg started with, became Facebook. And the iPhone, which became far more than Steve Jobs sold, or even possibly likely envisioned. When Jobs introduced the phone, he said it is an iPod with a phone. It's your music and your phone together. It's the best iPod you've ever had. It had surfing capabilities, but he didn't emphasize that. That's fascinating. And then the like button, and then this is a new word, if I circle the word, the appification of all. That's the arrival of the apps. Now, after this book was written, have you paid attention to the news in the last week? Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook has basically said to the U.S. government, regulate us more. If you've not heard that, it's breathtaking. He says, regulate us more. Find another CEO who says, regulate us more. And, and remember, he was against regulation, but he basically says, we can't control it. We can't control it. All right, turn to page eight. And then they caught us. People don't succumb to screens because they're lazy, but instead because billions of dollars have been invested to make this outcome inevitable. They own us. Addiction is a condition in which a person engages in use of a substance or any behavior for which the rewarding effects provide a compelling incentive to repeatedly pursue the behavior despite detrimental consequences. I have a lifelong battle with a couple of things. Nothing, not a drug, bluebell. <laughs> and, and, and I'll go for a while and really conquer it, 
and then I want more calories. I mean, these, these, these behaviors are detrimental. So the need is for digital minimalism. And Cal Newport said, of the different philosophies I studied, there was one in particular that stood out as a superior answer for those looking to thrive in our current moment of technological overload. I call it digital minimalism. And it applies the belief that less can be more to our relationship with digital tools. So the process, step away for 30 days, decide what you need to use that you will in fact find value in, but be careful stepping back. You can't do it with little tweaks. The problem is that small changes are not enough to solve our big issues with new technologies. You got to step away to reestablish control. So the three core principles, number one, clutter is costly, digital clutter. Number two, optimization is important. Decide what is valuable, optimize that, and don't do the other stuff. And principle three, Everybody circle this word, intentionality. You see, when you sit and you play with Facebook or Twitter, it's not very intentional. Um, at this point, I need to mention that his earlier book, Deep Work, is one of the most important books I've read. I did present that here. You can order the recording and the handout. It is a great book. And it says you need to build up to the capability of four hours out of whack of intense focus of deep work. That's how I read these books. I set a timer and I read for chunks of time and I learned the process by reading deep work. And so the digital declutter, define your technology rules, take a 30 day break and then reintroduce technology. And everybody circle this one conversations are better than connections so when you're on Facebook or one of these and you see a picture of a, a child of a friend and you like the button you think you've made a connection no pick up the phone drive to Starbucks take them some muffins low calorie muffins <laughs> and talk to them Sherry Turkle is the one who came up with the line that conversations are better than connections, and, and, and he quotes her, and conversations actually build actual connection. Hitting the like button does not. It's the illusion of connection. So what will you gain? And here are some things in the back of the book that people gain. Time with family, time with friends, reading more books, lots of people mention that. Time with physical things. Uh, that should be real world things. Time with interest, solitude, time with yourself, time to write down your thoughts for your own pondering. Martin Luther King Jr. had moments of solitude and he said, it seemed at that moment that I could hear an inner voice saying, Martin Luther, stand up for righteousness, stand up for justice, stand up for truth. All right, turn to page nine. Some ideas and practices. Do you need office hours? Interesting. One guy who is very busy, when anybody contacts him, says, I'll answer my phone at 5.30. Call me. And he, and he has a time when he answers the phone, and he hints, I won't answer it any other time. So he set up personal office hours. Consolidate texting, doing it like email. Don't leave your email on all day. Don't leave your texting on all day. You don't have to perpetually text back. Do you know that the average teenager texts 3,000 text messages a month? 3,000. All right, take long walks, write letters to yourself. Don't ever click like. <laughs> Practice leisure with physical activity and with effort. Develop craft. Fix or build something with your hands every week. Follow leisure plans. Join something. 
It's wonderful to come here once a month and see people. It's wonderful to go to Success North Dallas. Where do you go where you see people and have conversations? Delete, so this is an interesting idea. Don't have Twitter on your phone, only have it on your desktop. You can check it when you're at your desktop, but you're not always on Twitter. And then consider joining the dumb phone movement. <laughs> the dumb phone movement says, I can do what I need at my desktop. I'm going to carry an old-fashioned flip phone. And for those of you younger, I need to tell you, a flip phone is not very old-fashioned. A black rotary dial phone plugged into the wall. That's not old-fashioned. All right. Um, I'm not going to take the time to read the excerpts from the book at the beginning. They're wonderful. I hope you'll read the first pages. Let's end with some lessons and takeaways here at the bottom of page nine. Number one, first acknowledge your problem. You know, step one in the 12 steps. I'm addicted. Number two, this will require a big plan, not tiny tweaks to defeat this. Make such a big plan. Number three, become intentional about what you will do with your time, what you will accomplish. Do on purpose what you do. Intend to do it. Number four, quit the mindless hitting of the like button, however you hit the like button. Number five, have more actual physical in the presence of the other person, human voice-to-voice, face-to-face conversations. Number six, develop your own what not to do and what to do, list and plan. Number seven, in other words, cultivate a more robust inner life. Will I do what this book says? I don't know. But I think Prince Harry is right. Anxiety is up. Suicide is up. We've got a problem. We've got to tackle. Digital minimalism, choosing a focused life in a noisy world. Hope you found this useful. Thank you.